Welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Tuya Knives and Skeleton Blade Works Hellfire. Love the name and the first instance I saw this one, I fell in love with the overall aesthetics of this. It's either going to be a love it or hate it. I love it. I would call this a medium sized EDC knife at 7.77 inches long with a 3.33 inch blade. They're, I think, calling this a cleaver shaped blade. I can get behind that. You have dual fullers on both sides compound grind you have a higher flat grind here that comes down nice and thin and then a little bit thicker grind here that's still fairly thin as well you have two sets of jimping up top one if you're choked back right here and then in this little scoop right there probably my favorite spot in the saber grip there's nice placement and it grips the finger nicely as well you have a scalpel like tip there great for doing utility cuts you can put your finger up here for some added pressure you can get some really fine precise cutting with that tip so excellent utility blade shape has a satin finish on the blade and a blasted finish in those fullers you do have a sharpening notch cut in right here you should have a few sharpenings before it'll start to widen up back here the blade still on this one is in CPM S90V and I've tested quite a few of the Tuya S90V blades and I've been fairly impressed so far. So let's see what this one can do. Man, Tuya over the last year and a half or so has really, really just been impressing me. The out of box sharpness on this knife, outstanding. I always love when you have a big wide blade like that, especially if it's got good geometry like this one. They just slice so well. This one is just zipping through this, no problem. It's uh, comfortable so far. This is light duty stuff, of course, but so far so good. <laughs> Definitely could have chopped up some cardboard probably all day. Now we're going to test these Zergos, and I was a little worried just because when I gripped the knife, um, you know, initially it feels like it might be uncomfortable, especially with that raised back spacer, and I was kind of feeling the pocket clip. So I started increasing the pressure and more and more and more, and as you can see, I'm really getting down into it. I even do a little chopping here in a little bit <laughs> just to get that little piece off the front. You'll see. And uh, I, I'm very very uh impressed and kind of shocked that it was way way more comfortable i think it's because it's got a wider handle and those contoured scales feel nice now this is from my medium size hands you know your mileage may vary depending on your hand size but i am bearing down with pretty much all my might on some of these and nice and comfortable either in the hammer grip and the saber grip you can see me put my thumb up there I, I went to the saber grip whenever I want a little bit of extra control but if I want that power hammer grip all the way and yeah this one was fun <laughs> I did it a little bit longer than I normally do just because I was having so much fun and as you can see I'm rocking that pointer finger grip that just means pretty much 99% of the time that first I have a blister and second it has a good edge on it because if it if it's not sharp or doesn't have bite that pointer finger grip is going to require way too much downward force for my fingers to be able to handle so uh definitely you know nice and crisp edge and it's comfortable that way especially the way this the spine curves up like that gives me that extra momentum you got the extra mass of that wide blade making this very easy I love that gentle belly. It's got a low tip, so I can easily do these flat cuts on the, I mean, cuts on a flat surface. And I'm, I'm able to do it very, you know, very uh, effortless. Sorry about that. Can't think today. Um, zipping through it, we end up going through, uh, let me, I think it was like 120 maybe cuts of the half inch thistle rope. And... Uh, I could have done more. I ran out. Um, I was getting, I was running low on the last test, and this is probably my last piece. Time to order some more. Yay for me! But it definitely, in my opinion, did great. Still feels nice up there in the front. And I've tested several Kubi knives in S90, and they've all been pretty darn good performers. We'll see if it still has bite once we move on to the last portion. Definitely going to excel on those drag cuts. It's nice and thin up there by that tip. 
It's like a little scalpel. And once again, you can see me using that pointy finger grip. I'm glad I'm able to do that because I got a huge blister on that index finger from testing too many knives. But definitely has a lot of bite. Get to the 10 ounce denim, still zipping through it. Outstanding job to you. Outstanding job, Jim, for the beautiful design. Love it. Now let's look at the deployment action of this knife. You have a flipper tab with some nice jimping there, and you have those fullers. Both of them work rather well. I was kind of worried when I saw how low that flipper tab is, but they have the detent dialed, and it's basically like a push down. This thing rockets out. You do have that mass of that blade whipping around, making it nice and fast, nice and drop shut action. It is riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball that is well tuned. And being that you have this full, almost full length fuller that goes all the way to the end right here, I can put my finger there if I want to, and I can easily reverse flick it. If I want an even harder reverse flick, I just come up a little bit higher. But that allows them to dial the D10 in a little bit harder, and that's why this one works so well, even though it's lower than that pivot. Comes out nicely. And you also have a little landing pad milled in the scales right there for whenever you come off the flipper tab. Now let's take a look at the handle area. You have this stunning, I love standard weave carbon fiber. I think it looks really nice, especially when the scales are contoured like this. It really plays well with the lights. And they did an excellent, excellent job. I haven't noticed any voids, any hot spots, no crazy gaps. Looks very, very nice well done to you and like i said you have that nice gentle contour on those scales i like the breakup right there i think it looks nice now i do wish they would have put the inlays on this side kind of like they did with the scaphoid you have it here and on the back side i think it would have been a little bit more aesthetically pleasing but i'm okay with it you have a Torx T8 for the pivot. Unfortunately, they went with T6 for the body screws. I think it would have made more sense with T8 just because of, you know, the mass of this knife. You have almost a full-length backspacer that does sit proud of the scales, it, as you can see there. And I, I got to say, I was a little bit worried about this, and I, I think I figured out why they did that. At first, I was like, why in the world would you do that? Well, if you look at this blade and you see how close it is right here, and you have the belly widening up as it goes. Well, they have a little channel inside this backspacer. So the blade doesn't contact that. And in order for this blade, I'm, I'm guessing, to sit all the way down into the handle and not be sticking out right here or make it dangerous to where you can cut yourself in the closed position, they raise that up. Now, I did all my normal testing with this. I, I even pushed a lot harder because whenever I initially grabbed it, I was like, oh, that's going to be uncomfortable. But after the testing, I was very surprised. It did not bother me at all. And as long as your fingers fit into these grooves right here, then you'll be fine. My medium-sized hands fit nice. Now, if you had large hands, it might sit off the back end right here, but it should still feel pretty good. And if this handle's too small for you, <clears throat> I've talked to Jim and they're making a larger version of this. It was actually supposed to come out before this one, but this one ended up making it out first. Besides the milling up on top that reduced the weight, you also have tons of pocketing on that top right there. Hopefully you can see that as good as I can. And you do have a pocket on the lock side as well to bring down the weight as much as possible because that's a lot of titanium, wide titanium scales, a wide chunk of S90V, bringing your weight to 5.24 ounces. And I'm, I'm kind of shocked there because it, it feels a lot lighter than that in the pocket. So if I had to guess, the balance point is probably perfect. Let's see. Yeah, perfectly done. That's pretty impressive, you know, because you got that big old chunk of blade there. You have a milled titanium pocket clip. It functions nicely. And you have this little portion sticking out of the pocket. It's not that big of a deal. I didn't find it to be a big deal. Now it is a pocket haul because it's wide, but not something that bothers me because I usually carry my knife only in that pocket. Now it is tip up or right hand carry only, unfortunately for lefties. The lockup on my knife is sitting, I'd say at around 40% or so. And 
the axis of the lock bar is pretty decent. These two scales are flush with each other if you look like this, but they do have these chamfers in the insides right there. It helps me to get my thumb in there easily and it's not a problem at all for me. And you do have a hardened stainless steel lock insert that also acts as an over travel. Quick size comparison with the Tuya Kaladin and the Tuya Scaphoid. It's a little bit shorter than the Scaphoid and it's a good bit shorter than the Kaladin. Next up, we have the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. Lastly, we have the Spyderco PM2 and Power 3. Now for my nitpicks and complaints. First one's just a nitpick. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the blasting inside the fullers just because I live here in the south and I have a lot of fullers with specks of rust on them. I just got to keep some corrosion inhibitor on them. They should be fine. The one good thing about these is this one is nice and smooth. The finishing underneath it's nice and smooth. So the pores on it might not be as wide as it would be if it was really rough. And lastly, I, I said it earlier, I do wish that the inlays were carried over on this side, at least on like right here, kind of like they did on the scaphoid. I think it would have been more aesthetically pleasing and would have kind of tied it in a little bit better but all that said my final thoughts i absolutely love the knife this thing sliced very very well it turned out to be a lot more comfortable than i expected it's got really really nice action it's unique looking i like the compound grind i love the s90b steel and even though it doesn't have the inlays on both sides i still love the knife it comes in at $279, and for as much of a chunk of S9V you're getting and as much titanium carbon fiber, do I think it's worth that? Yeah, I'm okay with that price. So, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below, and I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.